My favorite kind of challenges are ones that restrict the main point of the game. Think of playing Mario 64 without pressing the A button, or exclusively playing RuneScape in this one area that's derivative of the rest of the game. Through these challenges, you see methods of completing the game that no one has really used before. It forces you to analyze every bit of the game for every little avenue of progression possible. And that is what has inspired this challenge today. I'm gonna go through 100 days without farming, which I'd argue is the main skill of Stardew Valley. For this challenge, I'm counting anything that I could see as related to the farming skill as farming itself. So first, of course I can't plant or harvest any crops. I may hoe the ground, but putting a seed in there is off limits. I'm also not allowed to own any animals. While they don't give you farming experience, the professions in the farming stat are related to animals, so they're included. Also extending things a small bit, I can't do anything that's similar to farming, so planting wild seeds, despite giving foraging experience when harvested, is also not allowed. The only thing I'll allow myself to plant are trees. It's not a challenge without goals though. I wanted to add a variety of things to work towards both to push us towards making profit, but also to branch out and add more to this run than just making as much money as possible. I'll be using a point system because it's fun. So number one pay off the entire JoJo membership form, including the movie theater. 20 points for the membership and 20 points for the movie theater. Two, collect six of the seven star drops. Only one will be impossible due to the lack of farming. There will be five points for each star drop. As a reminder, the six star drops are get to floor 100 of the mines, buy one from the stand during the Stardew Fair, buy one from Krobus for 20,000 gold, hit 13 hearts with your spouse, catch every fish, and donate every artifact and mineral to the museum. Number three, this one's a little more fun than the others, obtain a fish pond of each color, of which there are five. 10 points for this. Number four, reach floor 100 of the Skull Caverns, 10 points. And number five, enter the Walnut Room on Ginger Island, 10 points. Many of these goals are going to require that we keep working up until the very last day of the challenge. It's actually really funny how it works out. I'll explain the challenges and how they're going to work in more detail as we come across them in the run. Without further ado, let's start the first day. As I'm setting up the farm here, you'll notice that I put the day counter in the top left corner of the screen. Didn't have the foresight to see that that would cover up the mine floor numbers, so I'll give you the lowdown whenever it's important, so you'll know. Also, I am not going to be doing any modifications to this save file. Everything is going to be set to default. Except for the farm, we're going to be using the Riverland farm. Mostly because this farm is awful for actually farming, and since this is a no farming challenge, this is pretty much the best instance to use that farm. Very first thing I'm doing is farming for fiber. I'm going to need to stockpile as much as I can for one of our first big money makers. And here's something you don't see often, selling the first 15 parsnips because I don't need them. So main thing about our early game here is we are going to be going to the beach very often and clay farming. If you don't know how clay farming works, there's many videos on YouTube that will show you exactly all the intricacies of it. Essentially, clay sells for 20 gold each, and with this method, you can get over 100 gold pretty quickly with like the first half of a day. You'll notice that I'm not using animation canceling, it's just simply because I don't want to do it. I wanted this run to be more of a chilled, relaxed kind of run that kind of anyone could do and follow along if they really wanted to, to see how they would do. In that same view, this is unmodded, of course, this is vanilla Stardew Valley. And while I am allowing myself to clay farm, I'm not going to use some of the other larger exploits of the game. I'm not going to sequence break using out of bounds or getting on chairs or anything. No infinite money glitches and no using the casino to grind for days on end to get casino coins to sell hardwood fences. Not that I can unlock the casino anyway. Selling all of that clay gets us up to 2,920 gold. Do y'all hear what I hear? Day one backpack upgrade. There's a few characters I'm going to focus on getting friendship up with. Carolyn is one of those due to the unlock of tea saplings. And I'm also going to head to the saloon to buy a few salads. Those are, for now, the best energy to gold spend that we can get. So I'll be utilizing that a lot. I spend the rest of the first day walking through Cindersap Forest getting fiber and cutting down trees to try and get my foraging level up as soon as possible for multiple reasons. Although my big goal is getting to level four foraging before Salmonberry season starts. 
I let myself pass out because you only lose 10% of your gold at this point. I also leveled up to level 1 forging, so I don't take an energy hit either. We start day 2 by going to get the fishing rod. Of course, we're going to want to hit level 10 fishing by the end of spring, because we do need to catch the legend to get that star drop. And we proceed to once again clay farm. A lot of our first few days are going to be like this. Unfortunately, it wasn't a great day for clay farming, only 66, and Robin's out for the day, so I can't sell the clay immediately. So I put a chest next to the mountain lake to give myself some more inventory space, and fish the entire day away. I'm not joking, I literally fish until I pass out. And from all that, we immediately jump up to level two fishing. To start day three, still haven't had enough, gotta do a little more fishing until nine when Robin opens up so I can sell all of that clay that I got yesterday. I also run down to Willy's to sell all the fish that I fished up yesterday and found that he's selling crab pots. And that's how I found out that I already hit level three fishing. I only sell what will sell for more than 75 gold each because another one of our big money makers is going to be sashimi, which we're going to have to become friends with Linus for. I go ahead and buy the fiberglass rod since I'm going to be doing a lot of fishing anyway, it'll make its money back, and we head off. I find a worm spot on the beach and we get our very first artifact from it, the anchor. Only 94 items to go. Since we do have the artifact now, I'm going to stop clay farming right before 4 p.m. so that we can get to Clint's and open up those three geodes we got earlier and then donate everything to the museum. I got some copper from the first one and two minerals from the others. And just like that, three of the 95 items we need. We're almost done. The rest of my day is dedicated to getting wood, both to increase my forging level and so I can start a sorting system with a bunch of chests. That night, I hit both level 2 foraging and level 3 fishing. Level 3 fishing being important because now I can craft crab pots. Basically, my thinking is I need some form of automated money maker, and since farm crops can't take that, crab pots are a close alternative, right? It's basically star fruit. On day 4, thanks to us getting copper from one of our geodes, we now get the furnace crafting recipe. And I also make a few more chests to get things a bit more organized. Now I have a blue chest exclusively for fish that will sell for less than 75 gold to be turned into sashimi, and a green chest for any forgeables or naturey items that I come across that I just want to get rid of. The clay farming actually goes so awfully today that I just quit soon after starting. I quickly sell off the clay. Uh, one thing that's really weighing on my mind at this point is I need to get that level 10 fishing, and I know how tight it is. So. I spend the whole day fishing with the goal of hitting level 5 today. I organize the fish when I get back, and unfortunately we only hit level 4 fishing. You hate to see it. Yeah! We did make a whole 1,500 gold just from selling things in the shipping bin that night though, so that was pretty nice. For day 5, by the way, sometimes you're gonna see the day marker be wrong in the top left, don't worry about it, it's fine. Day 5. We have a dilemma, because it is raining, which means it's a great day for catfish, a lot of money to be made there, but also, it's a perfect luck day, and today's the first day the mines open up. So I need to make a decision. In the end, I choose to go to the mines, because the faster we get to the bottom of the mines, the faster we can upgrade our tools, the faster we can probably get to the desert, and things just tumble on and on from there. The most interesting thing that happens is a Dougie drops a yam. Yams? If <laughs> they drop yams? And once we hit floor 15, just barely due to lack of energy, we head back up. My main goal that day was to get enough copper to be able to upgrade a tool, and luckily we did get all that, so hopefully the pickaxe should be getting upgraded soon. So to make the best of this beautiful day, I'm now going to go fishing, since I can pretty much replenish my energy as I fish by eating the fish I catch. Unfortunately, I didn't catch any catfish like I was hoping for, I'm just not a high enough level for it to be easy enough to. I organize everything out, and we end our day. For all that work, we do hit level 1 mining. I start off my day just just getting rid of a ton of debris on my farm to open up for room for later, and also to kill time while I have the rest of my copper smelt. Also, since it's day 5, we finally have access to the community center. Unfortunately, I can't donate our foraged items until tomorrow due to the fact that I need to wait to get the 
language thing from the wizard. Also, while I'm in town, I pay a visit to Carolyn. I wasn't planning on visiting her, but I have Amethyst in my inventory, which she likes, so I give it to her. And since we're heading over to Clint's anyway, I bring all my geodes to be opened as well. And from our trip to the mines and opening the geodes, we now have eight more items that we can donate to the museum, bringing our total to 11, which is pretty snazzy for day six. Then, working on both my foraging level and getting wood for the bridge, I cut down a few more trees, unlock the bridge to the tide pools, finally pick up like the six coral that is there, which is a lot, and then I start to do my first batch of ocean fishing. While fishing here, I get the achievement Fisherman, which means we've fished up 10 different kinds of fish, including algae, I guess. I didn't know that counted. I sold a bunch of items that night, getting 1,300 gold, just about making up for the money that I spent upgrading the pickaxe. As you may remember, it's supposed to rain today for day seven, and I also need to go down to the wizard so that I can unlock the community center in all of its glory. Also, so since it's Sunday, I can check the traveling merchant to see if there's anything cool. You never know. And of course there's a rare seed on the first time I check it. For reference, I'm really checking for quality sprinklers for the most part, because that would enable me to do a slime hutch. I cut down yet more trees while waiting for the wizard, learn the language of the forest, feed Carolyn more daffodils, and we go and complete the spring foraging bundle. I then spend the rest of my day fishing, because it is a rainy day and I do still need that catfish, and luckily I do get it, along with many others. From all that, I hit level 6 fishing, and I got about 1,800 gold from all the fish that I sold. Finally, on day 8, our copper pickaxe is ready, so I grab all of our geodes, and before the shop opens, do a foraging run around the entire valley. After breaking open the geodes, I have 5 more items to donate, a few of which I got from fishing the other day. This brings our total up to 16. I then do my gift duties to Carolyn and Linus, and then with our copper axe, head back into the mines. Despite struggling for energy, I just barely managed to get to floor 25. With all the copper we got today, my plan is to use five bars to upgrade our axe to copper, and then two bars to start up our crab pots, because I did choose the crab pot bundle profession at level five. On day nine, I realized I miscounted the copper. I didn't realize that crab pots needed two bars, so I had to really quickly go back to the mines and get another bar's worth. The short trip turned into me hitting floor 30, so I didn't get out of the mines in time to go upgrade our axe. And then I go to gift Linus quartz. He doesn't like quartz. You know, forged minerals are a universal like, but no one likes quartz, I guess. With a pretty unimpressive day so far, I go and do some clay farming to brighten it up a bit. We have a pretty good session here, getting 137 clay. And to finish off our day, I donate three items to the crab pot bundle. And with all the extra copper we got, I was able to make two more crab pots, so now we're rocking three. Big day 10. This is the first day that I realized, wait, I need to romance someone for a star drop. Immediately my mind went to Shane because he has an early birthday and buyable loved items, though I don't lock in my choice yet. Do some quick fishing, open some geodes, get about 50 Celestines for some reason, and donate one more artifact to the museum. 17. I do yet some more fishing, get another geode, get another new item to the museum, and I wrap up the day with a foraging run. Over the last few days in game, I had really been hoping for good luck, but it doesn't seem like I'm ever going to get it, so on this neutral luck day I decide to dedicate my entire day to the mines. I make it all the way down to floor 40 and get a whopping 43 copper. Despite the bad luck day, I actually had really good luck. However, I once again took a bit more time than I should have, so it's a race down to Clint's. My copper axe is delayed once again. Well, in the meantime, I have decided that I will be romancing Haley. Number one, she loves daffodils, which is a free item in spring that can be of a higher quality. And later on, once we get access to the desert, she loves coconuts. And if we get our foraging up to level 10, we get free iridium coconuts, which means free level 13 friendship with Haley. I spend the rest of the day smelting all the copper bars. And I also hit level two combat. On the 12th day of spring, we finally get our cat. It was pointed out to me that you can only get a cat on Wednesday and Friday, and every Wednesday and Friday up to this point had been rainy. So we had to wait all the way until day 12 to get our cat. You might remember a random poll like a few months ago where I asked about favorite pet color and gray cat won. So there it is. So last time I did a Stardew Valley playthrough, I named the cat after the love of my life, my cat, Machi. This time I'm going to name it after the other love of my life, Smorg. 
from Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. We start off our day with some healthy clay farming. And finally, I don't forget to upgrade my axe. I don't really do much the rest of the day, I give out gifts to the various people I need relationships with. I then get pretty much an entire day of bubble boosted fishing. And overnight I hit level 7 fishing. And from the combination of fishing and clay farming I earn 3,500 gold in one day. The next day we have great luck so I can't ignore that, I probably should go to the mines. Now that I hit floor 40 I do need to get some iron ore. I didn't realize it but it's also the egg festival today. The main reason to go there is for strawberry seeds, and obviously that doesn't help me at all. I'm already in the mines, so I decide to skip it. Unfortunately, the worst part about it is I won't be able to give Haley a second gift before the friendship resets tomorrow. I absolutely schmooved today, made it through 10 floors, and on floor 52, I found my first special slime, and it dropped the Iron Edge. If you weren't aware, your weapon at this point in the game is dreadfully awful, so this was a godsend. One floor later, I got another special slime. Unfortunately, it just gave me thermal boots, which wasn't even better than what I already had. In the end, we make it all the way down to floor 60. That mines trip literally took up the entirety of the day, so we head back, I complete the crab pot bundle on the way, and we head to bed. And hey, we hit level 3 mining. Since yesterday was a mining day, today will be a day dedicated to fishing, in the hopes that I I hit level 8 at least. We're now over halfway through spring so I really need to clutch out that fishing level to get the legend. I do want to pick up our copper axe though today, and from all of our mining yesterday we have 8 more things to donate to the museum. That's 27 items for those of you who are keeping track. I also decide to take one more extra trip today to go check out the traveling cart, and lo and behold, they have that quality sprinkler. It is 2,250 gold, but on the other hand, this could be my only chance to be able to use the slime hutch effectively, so I take it. Also, can't forget, today is Haley's birthday, so I bring up a gold dandelion, and she is absolutely loving it. And for our day dedicated to fishing, it ended up being like one third of a day dedicated to fishing, because at 5 p.m., we finally get to it. And to no one's surprise, no level up. We do get a fat 80 gold from clay though. Next day I get a letter telling me about the impending doom of all of my spring crops. One thing in these streams that I had been focusing on is getting the JoJo membership soon. I have, in retrospect, no clue why I was trying to get it so early. I think it is probably one of the biggest mistakes of the run how much I was trying to rush getting that. And it was so that I could get to the desert sooner, but when you look on the other side of things, there are entire sets of bundles that I probably could have completed if I hadn't tried to rush this so much, which would have saved me a lot of money in the long run. Anyway, to start our day, I did fish up a lot of magma geodes and artifacts yesterday, so I decided to break them all open and donate them. Which leads to another four items donated. And then I went and did the deed. I bought the membership form. This, this was so early. This, yeah. Ugh, bad decision. I then kind of forgot what I was doing, so I did a little stuff here and there, gave some gifts, did a little fishing, went back to my farm, and I realized that I was supposed to upgrade my pickaxe to steel today. And it's almost four, so I sprint to Clint's place. Literally five million IQ. Lost, hurt, and a little hungry, I decide to use this day to go harvest salmon berries, because it is the 15th, and it is in fact salmon berry season. I always maintain these are one of the best sources of energy in the entire game. Luckily, I hit level 4 foraging while I'm out there, so I start getting two salmon berries per bush. Overnight, we just barely got enough money to get our copper pickaxe upgraded, so that's the plan. Also, I haven't mentioned it much because I don't want to mention every single time I make more crab pots, but our crab pot army is looking pretty impressive at this point. So we're going to do a little bit of everything today. We're going to go foraging for salmon berries, get the stone junimo behind the community, pardon me, the Joja storehouse, upgrade the pickaxe, I go and buy a ton of bait. My reasoning here is that bait costs 5 gold each, right? Every bait is going into crab pots, which gives me 75 gold. So that's a 70 gold turnover. There's no reason for me to buy as much bait as I need. So I'm just going to keep buying a ton all at once. And then it's fishing time. 
Finally, I've hit level 8 fishing. It doesn't mean anything, it just means I'm closer to level 10. We have, however, hit 25,000 in earnings, so it's time to choose what our farm cave is. There's so many differences to this choice now, considering our circumstances. Number one, I've already bought the Joja membership form, so any contributions to the community center don't matter. I can't make kegs, I can't make preserves jars, so basically any use of the fruit bat cave is pointless. With mushrooms, on the other hand, they'll give me ingredients to make life elixirs, and even though I can't put common mushrooms into a seed maker because I won't unlock the seed maker, I can still use the common mushrooms to craft fall seeds, so I end up going with the mushrooms. We're gonna start our day focusing on foraging, both getting salmon berries and just trying to bump our foraging level up to level 5. This is of course aided that we can now clear off all of the hardwood stumps off of our farm with our copper axe, and we finish out the rest of the day by fishing. So day 18 is really the day that I start going crazy on getting to level 10 fishing, mostly because I realize, oh there's only 10 days left, I need to be to level 10 fishing, and it needs to be a rainy day. So if I get it on, oh there's 4 days left in spring, and we just don't have any more rainy days, I'm out of luck. So I really start rushing. So to start, I fish all day, I donate two items to the museum just to free up my inventory, and then I go to the saloon because I want to check and see if they'll have fish tacos. These are the only items sold in the saloon that can give a plus two fishing buff, which would mean we'd be level 10 fishing and we could get the legend immediately. Unfortunately not today, just a lucky launch. So we'll have to wait until another rainy day. So I uh, fish for the rest of the day. And from all of that fishing, we do in fact hit level 9. Next day, Jody asks me to bring her a cauliflower. That's not happening. So here's an option. We just hit level 9 fishing. Maybe I don't need to hit level 10 because Willy's always sells trout soup, which is a plus 1 fishing buff, so I yoink it. So with that on my mind, instead of fishing all day to try and hit level 10, I'm going to use this time to go into the mines. The goal here is to get enough iron to upgrade my axe so that we can start going to the secret woods to upgrade our foraging level, and of course just to get a little deeper. I'd like to upgrade my axe the next day, so I go ahead and start smelting the iron. I go and check on the traveling cart, absolutely nothing of use, of course, and I spend the rest of the day training foraging and fishing. And today's the day that I sold all the fish that we got from fishing the previous day. I got 3000 gold from all that, so now we're sitting a bit better. Unfortunately, it is not enough to buy the Iridium Rod, because today, we're going all in on trying to catch the legend with the Trout Soup. The Trout Soup wears off after about 3 hours in game, and nothing. I didn't even hook the legend. So I go down, buy more Trout Soup, and go back up and try again. This is a good time to mention that. Throughout this entire series, I do not want to reset days for any reason. Maybe I mess something up later on in the day, I'm not resetting. And from that spiel, you can probably tell that I did not in fact catch the legend today. I did hook it once, but no can do. My consolation prize is that I did fish up the Neptune's Glaive, which is a pretty good weapon for this early on, but it'll be outshined shortly by the Obsidian Edge. No level up and 2,700 gold from all the other fish that we caught that day. So I have a few more days to get my fishing level up to 10 and get enough money for the Iridium Rod. So I go for a Mines Day. For no real reason, we're just going here to test out our new Neptune's Glaive and go down 5 floors to floor 70. Now that it's midday, I can give a gift to Haley and to Carolyn. No level 2 hearts though, the two saplings will have to wait. I maintain at this point that I have so many spring seeds that the moment that I unlock the tea sapling recipe, I'm rich. So I go off and finish up the day with some more mines, so I end up making it all the way down to floor 80 and I decide to do a little bit more just so I can get enough gold to upgrade my pickaxe once again. I was pretty much only meaning to dip my toes into the magma floors of the mines, but I got all the way down to floor 90, so we take those. I also go back and pass out in front of my house. Got level 3 combat though. So today's going to be an errand day, I've collected a bunch of weapons and boots, so I'm gonna go sell them all at the Adventures Guild. Out of all the geodes I break open, I have three things to donate, and I also choose to give out some gifts today. And finally, Carolyn hits level 2 friendship. 
Immediately we go see that tea cutscene. Next we go and sell all of our weapons and extra boots, which ultimately doesn't amount to much, but it gets it out of our inventory. After all this, I still have quite a bit of time left, so I decide to go back to the mines. I do need to get a little bit more gold so that I can upgrade my pickaxe. And it'd be nice to get our first star drop by reaching level 100. And I get to floor 100 just in the nick of time. That is the first five points acquired. I head back to the farm. You might have noticed that I haven't gone into the mushroom cave yet. I completely forgot that I unlocked it, and so I constantly say things like, why don't I have the cave yet? Haven't I earned enough? So sorry about that. That night I hit level 4 combat and level 5 mining. I chose the minor profession. I really feel like there's not much of a reason to go for gemologist unless you're going to batch sell a ton of them that you have. So yeah, minor. Upon exiting my house, I exclaim that we will be getting to the bottom of the mines. Cause why not, I guess. And of course, checking the mail, we unlock the tea sapling recipe. I'm able to make 45 tea saplings right off the bat. So off of the high of my incoming money, I delve deeper into the mines. You might ask, oh, what happened to upgrading the pickaxe? I probably forgot, I don't know. I also get a mushroom floor, which I, I feel like I never find them, even though I go in the mines a lot. And bada boom bada bing bottom of the mines. I've got a little bit of time left, so of course I use it by fishing. As I often do, I cut it so close that I pass out right next to my bed. And very surprisingly, despite the fact that I just banged out 20 floors of the mines, no levels. All right, I check the weather and it is going to rain all day tomorrow. Day 25 of spring. That's almost guaranteed to be my final rainy day, so I've got to catch the legend on that day. To start off our day, I go on a little bit of a fiber hunt because that's currently my bottleneck in making more tea saplings. Also, today is the flower dance, so even if I wanted to, I can't go down south into Cinder Sap Forest. There is of course nothing for us there because we didn't hit four hearts with any characters, so there's no one we can dance with. There's not really much of a reason to go. So I'm just going to spend the day clearing out the farm. Cutting down trees, get a foraging level up, breaking the big boulders, getting my mining level up. So after that, I try to see if I can squeak out a level 10 fishing before tomorrow when I have to catch the legend. Unfortunately, no level 10 fishing. But we did get level 5 foraging, so I choose the gatherer profession. I also chose to sell all of my tea saplings today so I could get the iridium rod for tomorrow. 33,887 gold. Wow, that's great. It's not quite the number I was expecting, but that's fine. Country girls can make do. So today's the day we've got to get the legend. I can't really do much for now because I need to buy some trout soup and the iridium rod and all that, so I just do some trash fishing until nine. So I buy the iridium rod. I buy the trap bobber. As a reminder, it makes the fishing bar go down slower. And I buy trout soup. Oh, and I also buy 200 bait. Don't worry about it. I also use the rest of my money to buy minecarts. Throughout this entire playthrough, I've really been hurting for him, so this is gonna be nice. So, now the attempts start. I have three uses of trout soup, which should last me through pretty much the entire day. It's the second fish I hook, and I lose it just about immediately. From then until the very end of my Trapper Bobber's life, I don't hook it again. And so I need to go and craft another Trapper Bobber because I really don't expect to get it without it. At about 9 p.m., I am back to more fishing. Luckily for me, I hook it again and a battle ensues. I finally reel that bad boy in. Three days to go, just a few hours left in the day, Easiest thing I've ever done in my life. You love to see it. During all of that, I didn't even realize it, but I naturally hit level 10 fishing. And of course, I choose the Mariner profession, as any good Stardew player does. And the legend lines our pockets just a little bit more. So now I'm a little bit aimless for the rest of the season. I already got the legendary fish, I got to the bottom of the mines. So there's not much to do except pad up my levels a bit more. And make money, of course. I head to the secret woods for the first time. And finally, I feel like this is a lot later than I normally do it. I finally buy that inventory upgrade. After all of that fishing, and of course getting to the bottom of the mines, I have tons of geodes, so I break all of them open. I don't even break open all of the geodes, but I'm able to donate 11 items. That is 48 items, officially over halfway there. And I spend the rest of the day cutting down as many trees as I can. Since now, my main focus is going to be my forging level. And this is 
Finally, the moment that I realized that I've already unlocked the farm cave. So I harvest it for the first time. So the next day, day 27, is a day that I do something new. I specifically go out and farm for a specific material to make us more money. For now, I am farming for both fiber and copper ore. Fiber for tea saplings and copper ore for crab pots. And bug meat doesn't hurt either since I need to get bait anyway. Like I said, I'm a little lost with what to do with my time right now, and I notice that I have a mission to slay four red slimes. So I do it, get a little pocket change. And I use the last few hours of my day making copper bars, making crab pots from those, and expanding my empire. Also, thanks to all the fiber I farmed, I was able to make a ton of tea saplings, earning me another 10,000 gold. And upon checking the weather the next morning, I find out that yes, that day that I caught the legend was my last chance because there are no more rainy days for spring. At this point, I do start preparing just a little bit for the Skull Cavern. I plan on saving up money for the desert. I would like that to be the next unlock. I was kind of hoping to have it unlocked before the end of spring, but uh, what are you going to do? Also, in addition to dealing with my crab pots every morning, I add on to my daily chores going to the secret woods and getting the forging experience from all the hardwood stumps. We do a little bit of deforesting. And uh, that's literally it. I just cut down trees all day. I did head to the mines briefly at the very end of the day, just to get yet more copper ore for yet more crab pots. And so spring ends with not a bang, but a level up in both foraging and combat. Uh, this was very important because I hit level six foraging, which is where you get the lightning rods. And I need to have lightning rods ready for the summer. Remember that batteries are a requirement to get to Ginger Island. And to make crystallariums, which would probably be one of the better money makers I'll have during this run. Big plans for the first day of summer. I decide to go even more all in on crab pots than I already have. I'm going to buy coal and copper to make them. Here's the math. A crab pot takes 10 copper ore and two coal. If I buy all of that total, it will cost me about 14 days worth of crab pot fulls. So the earlier I get them out, the more money I make. So I think this is worth it. Also, I want to start working towards my fish ponds. As you remember, getting one color of every fish pond was one of the goals, so might as well start early. I do need to get a bit more seaweed, so I go and fish it up. I went and bought 105 copper. Again, I feel like it'll be worth it. I didn't bother buying the coal because I realized that I have access to charcoal machines now, so I have a ton of wood. That should never be a problem. Guess what? Mark off your bingo sheets. I forgot to go to Robin. Instead, I went down to the forest and went to catch the wood skip. Now that it's finally summer, I have a lot more fish to catch again. I then go around cutting down trees and looking for forageables. Since summer seeds only need three different foraged items to make them, I should be able to make quite a few more than I did in spring. And of course, I do, and I make a few tea saplings and sell them. Again, remember, my big money project now is getting the desert open. I finish off the day with a little bit of ocean fishing. Once again, there's new fish to catch. I also do catch a super cucumber, which is one of the fish I need to change the color of fish ponds. And then I use all that copper we made to make four more crab pots. I also scrounge up the materials to make two lightning rods, so no matter what the summer, if we ever get a storm, we'll at least get a few batteries. We're inching up pretty close to unlocking the desert, so I decided to do some clay farming today. We had a not awful, not great day clay farming. I got 55. And I decide to do a new activity for the rest of the day. I'm gonna go geode hunting. I know how stressful getting all of the museum artifacts is, so I hope that this will make it a little easier just front loading all the geode items. I leave with one magma geode and one frozen geode. Stonks. That night we hit level six mining and day 31, we unlock the spa tomorrow. We start our day by doing a little bit of foraging and after grabbing all of the geodes that we have just sitting around in the farm, we go to break them all open and we're able to donate three more items to the museum. We don't have much farther to go until we unlock the sewers though. Not that that's the most useful area. Before leaving, I go ahead and get my pickaxe upgraded to gold. I realize that even if I do have the money to unlock the desert, is not that useful unless I have a better pickaxe. And I also go to unlock our first fish pond. Of course, we take a quick trip up to the spa to steal all of its fiber. While I was up there, I got a bone, so I donated it. Why not? We've got a ton of ore, so I start smelting it all, and while I'm waiting, I start decorating the farm a bit. Just a little something to make it not look so empty. 
I guess. If I can't fill it all up with crops, there's gotta be something. And for profit, I do a lot of fishing. It almost feels like a waste to have my level 10 fishing already because I pretty much keep fishing throughout the entire series. The next day, I designate our Crimson Fish Day. We already have the level to catch it. It's not nearly as hard as the legend. Should be easy. While I'm going for it, I do catch the octopus, which if you didn't know is the hardest non-legendary fish. And it took a hilariously long time to hook the Crimson Fish, but I finally hooked it and immediately was able to catch it. With the help of a trapper bobber, of course. I pretty much spend the rest of the day just doing some house cleaning. I add a few more chests to my organization. I get rid of items that I'm never really gonna need since I don't have any of the machines to make from farming. That really makes a lot of things just completely useless. And all of that cleaning really paid off because we got 8,000 gold from it. Next day our fish pond is done being built and so I put a octopus in it that's not permanent i do need one fish pond that stays as blue i just thought octopus would be an interesting thing to be in there today is also the day that our gold pickaxe is ready not that we can really do too much with it at the moment it does have one great use and that's to get us yeah, more copper ore for, you guessed it, crab pots. It's nice not having a thousand things that I need to do every day anymore, because now I can basically have an entire day spent on one task. It's a lot more efficient than, oh, I need to go do fishing. Ooh, but I also need to get level four foraging. Ooh, but I need to give three different people gifts. It's getting a lot more simple as we go on. Next day, we have a storm, so I go ahead and make a few more lightning rods while I have the chance. And we also have a few fish that we need to catch today because there are rain-only summer fish. I go mining for some more copper and make more crab pots. Someday I'll be satisfied with this. Lucky us, we get another rainy day in a row, so that's yet more batteries. With only 7,000 gold to go until we get to 40,000, which is how much we need to unlock the desert, that is pretty much my main focus at the moment. I do a variety of money-making methods just to not get bored. I get my mushrooms, I go fishing a little bit, and I head down to the magma caverns to get gold, fiber for tea saplings, and of course magma geodes. Another focus at this point is just gathering bombs and stuff, because we'll be going into those skull caverns soon. At the end of the day, I start making so many crab pots that we're now starting to extend onto the second island of the river farm. Just for fun, I counted how many crab pots we have right now. 36 of them. This amounts to a free 2,700 gold a day. And tonight, we also hit level 7 foraging. We're now 3,000 gold away from unlocking the desert. First thing we do today is go and give Linus a gift and, what do you know, three hearts. So we should be getting the sashimi recipe in the mail tomorrow. Tomorrow. Of course, we still haven't solved the problem of we do need to be able to cook it. Couldn't tell you why, but at this point I was more focused on getting to level 9 foraging instead of just buying the house upgrade. I think I was too overwhelmed with wanting to get to the desert. This is another thing that I'd probably change if I were to do this challenge again. Just get the house upgrade. I find a few more foraged items and it's just enough to be able to make a few tea saplings. I go to Pierre's, sell the tea saplings, and I have just enough to finally unlock the desert. 40,000 spent, finally, we'll be able to go. I then go back into the mines for, you guessed it, more gold. I actually end up having to leave early because my HP got really low. And at this point, I've already used all of my salmon berries. So I end my day by going and doing my foraging chores. Finally, overnight, there's that beautiful bus being worked on. And we hit level 6 combat. I check the luck, and we have actually kind of good luck today. So I might just do a little dip my toes into the skull cavern. We also, of course, get the sashimi recipe, and it'll sit there for a while. So first thing we do when we get to the desert, I look for coconuts, because it's a loved island for Haley, and we're still trying to romance her. Take a crazy guess at what I didn't find. I take this opportunity to go ahead and quickly get the sandfish. I'm gonna skip out on the scorpion carp for now. And now we're gonna take a little trip into the skull cavern. There's not really a specific goal, I kind of just like to get enough iridium ore to make an iridium bar or two, I don't know. Of course, just to quickly go over all of the things in the skull cavern that are gonna be useful to us. Lots of omni geodes, great for filling up the museum. Ore of every single type, of which we pretty much have a use for each one. I do still need to find a prismatic shard so that I can get the galaxy sword and many other things. And before we embark on an important trip here, we will need some spicy eels just to get us going. I struggle here quite a bit. 
obviously you probably don't want to be coming here at level 6 combat, and on top of that I have not even gotten any rings that are going to be at all useful. And there's also quite a few artifacts that are pretty much only found in the Skull Cavern. There's a lot of bones that dinosaurs drop, alongside the dinosaur egg of course. So yeah, we're going to be spending a lot of time in the Skull Cavern. Things are, well, I'd say going well, but they're not really. I get down to about floor 23 when... Whoa! That one hurt! So yeah, I'd say our first delve into the Skull Cavern was a rousing success. On the right side, we did get enough Iridium Ore to make a bar, so there's that. We came out with quite a few geodes as well, so it, you know, it's not all awful. Day 37, I got the letter telling me about the Luau, which I had completely forgotten about. At this point, I think the only character I need relationship with is Haley, but it will help towards that, so I'll do it. I bust open like a million geodes, and I get four more items to donate to the museum. Like I said, it's gonna slow down. I give Haley the big cake that we were sent a few days ago, and she's finally up to four out of eight hearts. I spend the entire rest of the day in the frozen mines, mostly because at this point I'm feeling like I've opened up all of the geodes that aren't frozen geodes a ton, and because after that last showing in the Skull Cavern, I'd like to get some more bombs to make our life a little bit easier. To end off the day, I actually try to go fishing for super cucumbers, because that's one of the very few items that I can get my hands on that can get me the best result out of the luau. Unfortunately, I don't catch any, and I didn't know this, but if you go to sleep after hitting zero energy, you will wake up up with only one energy the next day. Luckily we do have our super cucumber from the last time I caught one, so I just decide to use that and then I'll catch another one later for a fish pond. They love my soup and that's a quick day. On a beautiful day 40, I decide to do a semi-serious run into the Skull Cavern. I trade some rubies and emeralds at the Desert Merchant for some spicy eels and cheese respectively. Spicy eels for the buff and cheese just for the health. I couldn't tell you what happened here, but I had a crazy good luck day. This was meant to just be like a throwaway, oh maybe I'll get to like floor 25 or 30. I got to floor 67. For my trouble I got 40 iridium ore, level 7 combat, and level 8 mining. I completely forgot the next day that you actually get 10,000 gold for reaching floor 25 of the Skull Cavern. That's wild. Today we have another stormy day, so my plan for the day is making sure that I catch every fish that I can up to this point which means I need to go get an eel. I also take time to break open all the geodes that I collected while going through the Skull Cavern, which gives me two more items to donate. We're now at 58 items donated. I also start cleaning up fish in other areas, so I go for the ghost fish and the stone fish, and then head down deeper and go for the ice pit. I also try to go for the lava eel for quite a long time, but I never even hook it once. I'll probably just wait until I unlock the volcano to get it. The next day we unlock tailoring because I think we got our first cloth, I again spend the day trying to get all the fish I've yet to get, and I just need the rainbow trout and the dorado. I catch them both pretty easy, go to the desert to get some coconuts for Haley, and I decide to go for the scorpion carp while I'm here as well. It absolutely stomps me, so I'm gonna come back for it later. The next day is yet another stormy day. I also start upgrading to the gold axe because I'm really trying to get my foraging level on lock and that would just make it faster. And without the axe, that leaves us in the mines trying to get more copper for, you know. Next day is a great luck day, so I do some casual skull caverning. And lucky lucky me, I find my first prehistoric floor. And I die immediately. I want you to keep in mind that at this point, I'm not like, oh, I really need a dinosaur egg. It'll come to me naturally. That's what I think. The penalty for dying wasn't that bad. Just a thousand gold, all my iridium, all my gold, all my bombs, no biggie. So I go to the recovery service and get my bombs back. I think that's probably the most important thing I lost. Just to feel like I did something, I make a few tea saplings and end our day with 2,000 gold profit. After that trauma, I need a little bit of relaxation, so I just clear a lot of the debris off my farm and go open some geodes. Ugh! That's poggers. First prismatic shard from an omni geode. As you can probably guess, that's not getting donated. I'm using that for the Galaxy Sword. So not counting the Prismatic Shard, we have five items to donate. Also, since we just got our Golden Axe today, I just spend the day cutting down trees. And I hit level 8 foraging. Unfortunately, even though it gives us one of the best items in the farm warp totem, I have no way to make it because I can't make honey. But that just leaves us one level off from the cookout kit. And for those of you keeping track, we did in fact donate our 60th item, which means we got the sewer key. I'm looking to redeem that Prismatic 
prismatic shards, so we go to the desert and I get my sword. Of course, I want to test it out, so we do another light skull cavern run. I hit level 9 mining and head on out of there. I decide to finally start making a few crystallariums. Basically, as long as I make them before day 50, and of course I put diamonds in them, they'll make me a good amount of profit. So today's a day of increasing our passive income. I make a ton of crab pots, covering now half of the second island, and now we have four crystallariums. Just because I was curious, I did the math. Each of these crystallariums will make me about 8,000 gold if I harvest the diamond whenever it's ready. I break open a few more geodes. I have four more items to donate. Our total is now at 67 over two-thirds of the way there. So this is easy, we'll be done well before the time's up, right? And we take a trip to the sewer just to really quickly catch the mutant carp, one of the easier legendary fish, and of course, say hi to Krobus. Before our day ends, I just make a few more machines, two more crystallariums, a couple of crab pots, and get to sleep. Big money day, we made 7,000 gold, mostly from tea saplings and of course the mutant carp. So our next day is a very good luck day. I decide pretty early on I have a good weapon, I have tons of bombs. We're gonna hit floor 100 of the Skull Cavern today. The very first floor is an infestation floor. Okay, we staircase past that. Beyond that, constant mummy floors. Which might not mean much to you, but they are really bad layouts for the most part. Very thin hallways, not a lot of enemies to knock out for staircases. It is noon, and I have just barely gotten to floor 10, so I decide to bail. Despite all of our luck, it was going awfully. So instead, we just spend some time in the mines. I would like to hit a higher mining and combat level because that would help us out in the Skull Cavern immensely. I also move a couple of our crab pots into the ocean just because I need a couple of the fish from there. I did hit level 8 combat, which unlocks explosive ammo. Very important if you want to have a good Skull Cavern run. We have a pretty chill day today, I just cut down a bunch of trees, I get our second fish pond started, and collect a few magma geodes. And thus, we hit the halfway point of the run. Although we haven't hit a lot of our goals yet, these are very end gameish goals, so we should be hitting them pretty soon. I'm also pretty short-sighted at the moment just trying to hit level 9 forging, because once we can make all that sashimi, we have so many fish from all of our crab pots. I'm convinced that we'll probably be able to finish up all of the bundles immediately. Short-sighted at the moment just trying to hit level 9 forging, because once we can make all that sashimi, we have so many fish from all of our crab pots. I'm convinced that we'll probably be able to finish up all of the bundles immediately. I'm getting a little frustrated at this point with the progress of our forging stat because I was so sure I'd have that sashimi by now. All of the other stats you can just hardcore grind them and get them in like a week. Forging is kind of limited by, you know, what just spawns in the world. So I'm planting groves of trees with tree fertilizer on them. I will get the sashimi. Next day, forging in the mines. I don't know what you want me to say, that's it. Since our fish pond was finished building, I also went and caught a super cucumber and tossed it in. So that'll make a purple tinted fish pond. Day 52, foraging in the mines. And I also paid off the panning bundle from the JoJo membership. Just two more to go. Day 53, I completely dedicated to foraging. I also got the pan, which, you know, we'll see if anything comes of that. I'd like to be able to get my lucky ring in this run because I've never gotten it before. Next day was a Friday, so I went and checked the traveling cart. I have been checking the traveling cart pretty much every day, but it's never had anything of note. Although today it had the red cabbage seeds. Yay! I'm getting so lucky in a run where I don't need farming luck. The next day, that whole grove of trees that I planted finally sprouted, so I cut them all down, hoping for level 9 foraging. And finally, I hit it. This means tomorrow I get the sashimi recipe and we'll start off fall with so much money. To take up time for the rest of the day, I'm going to complete the rest of the crab pots that I want to make by having them all encompass the second little island that we have in the middle of the river. The total tally of crab pots is 96, which means every day that we harvest every single one of them, we are making 7,200 gold. So, next day I make the cookout kit and I cook 1,500 and 22 sashimis, coming out to 114,150 gold. And that is in fact enough to finish all of the JoJo membership that we have left, and I'm feeling good for the rest of the day so I just spend some time decorating the farm, and then it's jelly day so I go and see the jellyfish festival because I like it. So remember how I was saying I probably should have just upgraded the house anyway? With all of our money, the next day I go and upgrade the house because we will need it for a spouse. 
I have my choice between the bridge and the greenhouse. I'll go ahead and fix the bridge first, since the greenhouse really has absolutely no use to us. With a new season comes new fish, so I get started on them. I get the tiger trout, and then I go ahead and get the angler out of the way. It is very easy for a legendary fish, so it's no problem. Spend the rest of the day fishing in the ocean, I get another super cucumber so that I can fill in my fish pond, and that's really about it. I am going to be doing a lot of fishing because there are certain items in the museum that I can get from fishing, so it's a good way to go about it. And right before the end of the day, I do go down and get the midnight carp from the forest lake. Since we unlock the bridge the next day, I do go ahead and get the golden scythe. I'll also be taking many trips back here due to the fact that the haunted skulls both drop skeletal hands which I need, and treasure troves, which contain many of the items I have left for the museum. I'm gonna go ahead and blow away the rest of my money by buying the star drop from Krobus. And finally, I buy the last part of the Joja membership, the greenhouse. With that complete, that means we will be headed to Ginger Island sometime in the near future, but I have no Iridium bars, so I go to the Skull Cavern. It's not too serious of a run since we're going in so late, but I just need some materials. In the end, I got enough Iridium for four bars, which means we will be coming back. We did also get a rain totem out of a chest, so the next day I use a rain totem so that we can get the walleye out of the way. I go and donate one more item to the museum, which was just enough to get triple shot espresso as a reward. It's been a few days since I've done it, so I go ahead and do a foraging run because I do still want to hit level 10 foraging, despite already having the cookout kit. I also go and attempt to buy the hat of the playthrough. I always like to have a different hat of the playthrough for every time I play the game, so I buy the cool cap. Man, this thing is ugly. I hate it. It, it goes away after like a day. With the completion of the membership, we also have access to the Magic Ink mission from the wizard. So I go ahead and get started on that, catch myself a slime jack in the mutant bug lair, and I leave the rest of the mission for another day. On day 60, it's raining, so we go ahead and catch the walleye, as well as get introduced to Willy's back room. I also go ahead and do a geode run, since I have a ton of them from all the Skull Cavern runs I've done recently, which simply allows me to donate two more items to the museum. Build another fish pond. I'll also say, at this point, I realize that I need to get up to six hearts with Robin. Why? Well, because when it comes to getting as many golden walnuts as we can, you need the flute block to get five of them. And flute blocks are obtained at six hearts from Robin, so I start working on that. Basically, I'm just going to be bringing her skeddy. So now I'm going to go up and finish the ink quest. While we're at the witch's hut, I go fishing. You may be wondering, how do you get past the guard if you can't make mayonnaise? Since he needs void mayo. Well, after you talk to him, you can actually fish up void mayo straight from the water next to him. I also fish up a void salmon while I'm here, which is also one of the fish that changes the color of a pond, so I'll be putting that in a pond soon. And even though it doesn't really give me anything I need, I go ahead and grab the ink and bring it back to the wizard. All of that was pretty much just for the void salmon. I'd like to head off to Ginger Island soon, so the next day I go and get the last iridium bar I need. This also ends up unintentionally being a pretty serious dive into the Skull Cavern. Ladies and gentlemen, in this room, we reach floor 100. Should, yeah, I was about to say, should drop us exactly three levels. I haven't gotten the mission yet! Ugh! I forgot to get the Iridium Snake Milk that you need to have a mission found on a secret note. So, uh... No snake milk for me. I am counting this because I did get to floor 100. It was just way earlier than the game expects you to. That day I also hit level 10 mining. I did choose blacksmith as selling iridium bars are probably going to be one of the better sources of money in the late game. I also hit level 9 combat. Next day our fish pond's done so I throw in the void salmon. And then I go down to the beach and finish repairing the boat with all of the iridium we got last night. So that'll be up and running tomorrow. I also actually had no idea how much the movie theater costs even though it's one of my goals because I've never done the movie theater in a JoJo route. 500,000 gold. That's gonna be a lot tighter than I thought it was. I then go to catch what I consider to be one of the hardest fish in the entire game the scorpion cart. Over the last few days I've gotten a couple of artifacts from the skull cavern including a prismatic shard so I go ahead and donate four more items to the library. I also sold an extra batch of sashimi that night and it got me another 26,000 gold. That thing's a moneymaker. I don't care what anyone says, I love crab bots. So we have ginger island unlocked. I cannot 
not go to it, so I spend the rainy day building a fish pond, giving out a few gifts, and then we head on out. So, first day on Ginger Island. I know you can get golden walnuts really quickly, so let's see how we can do. Three from our first visit to the forest. I get eight golden walnuts really quickly. We don't talk about this one. And even though I did want to go to the volcano today, I don't have my watering can because I placed it in a chest like months ago and never got it back out. So I go ahead and start to explore the west side of the island too. I'd like to be able to buy the second house by the time the end of the day comes. So I get 18 walnuts. I still need a few more, start fishing. And then it comes to my attention. Kent will not appear at all in this playthrough, which means that I cannot complete Birdie's quest, which is a source of five golden walnuts. Let me tell you exactly what we need to do here. We need to hit a hundred golden walnuts because our goal is to open the golden walnut door, which takes a hundred. Because of not being able to farm, we straight up miss out on 20 golden walnuts, 15 from the gourmand frog and five from just harvesting crops. Now that we know that we can't get the five from Birdie, that only leaves us with a five golden walnut leeway. That's not a lot. So yeah, now I'm a little stressed. This also means that we definitely should get that mermaid quest done, which makes becoming friends with Robin that much more important. Anyway, I also catch the lionfish and the blue discus really quick as well. Now the blue discus is actually very important to us because one of the items they give in the fish pond is bananas. We need a banana to get three golden walnuts. And we simply put, do not have enough time to grow a banana tree. End of the day, I wasn't able to build the new house, so I just teleported back and went to sleep. Next day, it's blackberry season. I'm not really gonna go too crazy with this. Normally I would, but I'm so far in the game at this point that blackberries are kind of pointless. I replaced my ice pip fish pond with blue discus to start working on that banana. Also, while passively giving her coconuts this entire time, Haley finally got to eight hearts, so I'm giving her the bouquet today. Taking a trip to the blacksmith today, mainly because I did get a golden coconut, but I also have like 30 omni geodes. I did get the golden walnut from the golden coconut, but all of those omni geodes gave me nothing. Heading back to Ginger Island, I open up the dig site, and then I don't do anything because I forgot to bring a bomb. I have yet another fish pond finished, so I throw the slime jack. All we're missing is one more for the lava eel. Went back to Ginger Island with a bomb, let Professor Snail out. While I was in the north side of the island, I got six more golden walnuts, and I turned in two fossilized legs for the skeletons. And finally, I'm heading into the volcano. I go ahead and get the Lava River golden walnuts out of the way now, because that seems to trip up a lot of people, and I don't want to forget about it. So it's already 6 p.m. at this point. I really can't get to the end of the volcano. This is kind of just a quick exploration mission. I got four golden walnuts up to the halfway point, and I realized that I cannot open up that checkpoint because I need to have enough golden walnuts to open up the eastern side of the island. And remember, I'm at a 25 walnut deficit, which would make it really hard to open up that eastern portion if I started spending on other things. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to the end to unlock the shortcut, but that's fine. Next day, got the frog skeleton from the forest, quickly turned it in for a walnut. I also finally did the quiz, getting me two more golden walnuts. Finally got through the volcano dungeon, getting myself six golden walnuts in the process, four in the dungeon and two at the top. I decide to use my one enchantment chance on my pickaxe and I get a fishing, which is pretty much the last thing I wanted. And while I'm here, I finally fish up the lava eel. And with all those golden walnuts I got, I'm able to build the second house and go to sleep here for the night. And I take a tally of our total amount of walnuts, 54, which isn't bad considering we have about a season left. A lot of my time spent at Ginger Island at this point is going to be me searching for worms so that I can complete the skeletons. The big worries for me are finding the two snake vertebrae, which is only found from worms on the west side of Ginger Island, which is very rare to spawn in the first place. Fossilized ribs are only found in artifact spots on the southern part of the island, which is so small that it's rare. And then the fossilized tail can only be found from panning in the dig site river which is another just random chance thing. A lot of this just comes down to random chance and that worries me. In the meantime, I am trying to get enough money to buy the movie theater, so I check where I'm at by selling all my valuable stuff and now I'm sitting at about 100,000 gold. One fifth of the way there. I go to build the final fish pond 
And today is the first day it's raining in Ginger Island, so I start the bird quest. I go to the volcano dungeon to try and clean up any more golden walnuts that I have left, and I get two. Y'all gonna let me get a... Uh... Nope. No! Oh! I died and lost 5,000 gold, all of my cinder shards, and all of my coconuts. Anyways, I finally have enough golden walnuts to open up Ginger Island East. I go straight into the cave and get my golden walnut and fish up the stingray, which means any fish I have left to catch are all in winter. I then get the two easy golden walnuts outside, and that's pretty much all we can do here for now. And oh, as you look at that, it's day 69. I got the snake skull from worms, which is like the one skeleton piece I didn't need to get from worms, so that's good. Oh, also I noticed that people have started coming to Ginger Island. Yeah, I turned that off immediately, I hate that. Since I lost all of my coconuts in death, I go to the desert to try and get a few more. And I'll do a little baby skull cavern run. At this point, it's mostly just so I can get Iridium bars to sell, since as a reminder, they sell for 1,500 gold each now. On top of that, I really need to start putting a focus on completing the museum at this point, because things are gonna get harder and harder to find as we go on. And to finish off our day, you know I do a little decorating. So, dig spots on Ginger Island have a chance to give you artifact troves, and I've gotten four of those so far. And it should contain almost all items I have not gotten for the museum yet, so I do a geode poppin' day. And I get four more items to donate to the museum. It's another rainy day on Ginger Island, so I get another gem from the birds. And then there's a golden walnut on the northern end that I apparently walked by like ten times and didn't grab, so there it is. As I said before, I have no clue if I ever have all the golden walnuts from this dungeon. And also this entire time I do need to grind out journal scraps because that's how you get three golden walnuts. And they're unobtainable before you get the scrap for them. While going through the dungeon, I did get one more golden walnut. On the TV the next morning, I see that the Stardew Valley Fair is tomorrow, and I do actually need to participate in that because I need to get the star drop from it. Also, my last fish pond's done, so I throw the lava eel in, and now we just wait. So my plan for the Stardew Valley Fair is that I'm going to bring Lewis's shorts, because I don't have access to any high-quality crops or artisan goods, so that's kind of like the only way I can go with it. Of course, I don't have two hearts with Marnie, so I can't go in her room. I was going to use a chair glitch to get through. I never caught her that day, which means I actually do need to come up with something to bring tomorrow. So at this point, we're so far in our museum progress that I'm taking count of exactly what we need to do to get the items we have left. A lot of what's remaining is from artifact troves, digging in the desert, and then the dinosaur egg. I've been very unlucky with finding dinosaurs. There's only a few minerals left, two from frozen geodes and two from magma geodes. So eventually I'm gonna have to grind those two as well. So immediately what I decide to do is grind frozen geodes. Just from about seven in-game hours, I get seven frozen geodes, which isn't bad. But of course, I have to put that to the side because I need to get ready for the Stardew Valley Fair. On the day of the fair, before it starts, I just really quickly grind some frozen geodes and then head on down. The items I've brought are an iridium bar, a silver quality chanterelle, a diamond, a battery pack, a prismatic shard, void essence, spaghetti, a gold purple mushroom, and ice pipro probably the weirdest set of items you've ever seen. And I ended up getting second place. Now, I definitely could have prepared for this better. I could have had legendary fish and stuff, but you know what? We take those. Anyway, as we gamble our life away, always vote on green, you know the deal. And we get the star drop. This leaves us with three more star drops. One for catching every fish, one for filling up the museum, and one for getting 13 hearts with your spouse. I then, of course, buy the fedora with leftover points because I'm a nice guy. Next day, a tragedy. So blue discus will only give a banana if they are over a population of three, which means you do need to do the first mission for them. The item they ask for is a taro root. That is a crop. I checked, and this is the only item they ever ask for. Somehow, there's not a single way in the entire game to get taro roots without growing them yourself. On the day of this revelation, it is the 17th of fall. Our challenge ends on the 16th of winter, so even if somehow I was able to get a banana tree sapling right now, it would not grow in time. So that is three of the five leeway golden walnuts marked off. I go to pop open the geodes that I got the previous day, and I get one of the items from the frozen geode that I needed, leaving only three minerals to go. 
Next, I go back to Ginger Island, and even though we've only gotten two of the birds for the bird puzzle, I'm just gonna guess the other two. If you're wondering how to do this, there's only five possible gems for the bird puzzle, and once you get a few of them, you can just randomly try out combinations of the last two to eventually get the right order. That is five more golden walnuts. This gives me enough to unlock the island trader, but there's not really too many practical uses for this. If we were way earlier on, I could buy a banana sapling, but uh, the time has gone by for that. So next I bring in a ton of bombs to just blow up rocks for the mummified bat. It's a 1 in 200 chance, but you roll that chance every single time you break a rock. No luck. I brought, I brought bombs. I blew up so many rocks. This bat eludes me. Luckily, it's only one golden walnut, so if need be, I can just avoid that in the end. I also have another prismatic shard, so I go to enchant my hoe, and I get generous. This gives a 50% chance to double the amount of items that you get when digging a hole. This could actually be a very helpful enchantment for completing the museum. Next day, break open the golden coconut I found, and I do get the head for the skeleton and I have a skeletal rib to donate. I then have a day that's kind of reminiscent of summer. I go and try to get my foraging level up. I would like to hit level 10 so that I can get those iridium coconuts for Haley. Next day is a rainy day, which reminds me, we are still at nine hearts with Haley. I need to get to 10 hearts with her before the coming of winter. This is because you can only buy a mermaid pendant to marry someone when it's raining and during winter, it does not rain naturally. So at that point, I'd have to rely on a lot of luck to just find a rain totem somewhere, since I can't make it because I can't get truffle oil. So yeah, there's a bit of a race to get to 10 hearts with Haley. Also, we then see some quick results from that generous enchantment, getting four golden coconuts from one artifact spot. I go back into the volcano and I get a journal scrap during it, giving me one of the hints that I need to dig up one of the special spots. Money check, that last night I sold a bunch of sashimi and gold bars and we're now at 200,000 gold. Since I still haven't gotten either of the minerals from magma geodes that I still need, I go to grind magma geodes. And I get a few frozen geodes as well. Next day I go to pop open all the geodes I get because I don't want to over grind for something. And funny enough, from the golden coconuts I've gotten from all this, I get a banana tree. Just like a week late. And I get the mineral that I need. Which means at this point I only have one mineral left and it's from a magma geode. The Lemon Stone. Oh, I also donate the Scapula today, which is normally something that I find on like month one of a playthrough, but for some reason I was just really unlucky with it. On a high from all that progress, I have a really enlightened discussion with chat. Is a pickle a berry? And I head to the desert because one of the items I do need is the golden mask, and you get that from digging. I don't get the mask, but I do get my 20th golden relic. The next day is another rainy day. It is the 23rd of fall. This could be our last chance to get the mermaid pendant. Eh. Oh my god, we're gamers! We did it. So now we just need to go get the mermaid pendant, and now we'll be able to give her a gift every single day. So we ought to be good. The day of marriage will be the 26th of fall. Of course, while checking this, I also realized that I missed Robin's birthday, so that's just gonna make getting the flute blocks a little harder. I broke open some more treasure troves and got one of the items that I need. I finished off my day by doing some quick magma geode farming. I decided that today will be a skull cavern day, mostly because it's perfect luck. On this day, the wildest thing happened to me. Backstory, I've never gotten a luck ring in ever ever in any file that I've ever played. I have 700 hours on this game. But then this happened. <gasps> ah! What? Two luck rings within a minute of each other. I, I, I don't, yeah. Poxy will eat your heart out. Then of course, naturally, I just get two prismatic shards in one floor. Easy. So yeah, pretty good day at the Skull Cavern. Pop open all the magma geodes I've gotten. Nothing. I dig for a gold mask. Nothing. I did trade in all the Omni Geos I have for treasure troves though, and I got two items that I need. One of the items was the Bone Flute, which gives me one free flute block, which means I'm one fifth of the way there to completing the mermaid puzzle. I then muck around on Ginger Island quite a bit. I don't find anything good. Next day I get married, so now we won't be so lonely all the time. 
Also, another money update. I was able to sell a ton of sashimi and iridium bars yesterday, so we've now hit 320,000 gold. I go and grind for more magma geodes, because as a reminder, I still need that lemon stone. After a full day of farming, I'm talking literally morning to 9 p.m., nine magma geodes. A little less than I was hoping for. Next day, I got some mushroom trees, which really means nothing, but it's pretty. So of course I have to spend a little bit of time decorating around it. It seems like a good time to mention that literally every day I've still been doing my foraging route, just cutting down all the trees and hardwood stumps, and I finally hit level 10 foraging! I head to the desert, both to get more coconuts since I'm going to have to give them out every single day to Haley, and of course to try and get that golden mask. And I finally do get the golden mask. No coconuts though. I then do some more skull caverning because I still need to find a dinosaur. No luck, of course. Also, I don't think I noticed the point where it happened while I was actually playing, but all of my fish ponds have changed color, so that is a completed challenge. And of course, today is Spirit's Eve, so you know we're getting that golden pumpkin. I sell it immediately. That night, I do need to choose my level 10 foraging profession. Now, even though I've wanted botanist for a while to get those iridium quality coconuts, I choose tracker here because I think being able to find artifact spots just at a glance is going to be a lot more useful to me. Over the last few days, I've amassed 11 magma geodes. They do not give me a lemon stone. I am able to donate the golden mask though. Another rainy day on Ginger Island, and since I do have the tracker perk now, it'll be easier to find all those worms. Do I get anything I need? Nope. I then go to the top of the volcano to combine my lucky ring and glow ring. Don't ask, I never made an iridium band. That's just how it is. And the rest of the day, guess what I do? Magma geodes. I pass out in the mines, and that is the final day of fall. First day of winter, we immediately bump Haley up to 11 hearts, just two more to go. I also unlock the magnifying glass. I would like to try and go for iridium snake milk if I unlock the mission, but if not, eh, no big deal. First things first, we're getting some of the winter fish out of the way. The lingcod and perch come pretty easy. I then go to bust open a ton of magma geodes and a couple of treasure troves we got, and nothing useful. And more worrying, no lemon stone yet. I've probably popped open around 50 magma geodes just looking for that. I then spend the rest of the day going for the glacier fish. It gives me a lot of trouble, but I do end up getting it. Then to finish off a very strong day in fishing, at the very end of the day I go for the squid and get it immediately. This now means that the only fish that are missing are those that are caught in the night market. I then go to the volcano to grind cinder shards because I'd like to do a little bit more enchanting before we end off. And today's a pirate day, so I go and finally visit the pirates on the eastern side of Ginger Island. And of course, I get the three golden walnuts for doing the dark game three times. I spend the night on the island and it's a rainy day tomorrow, so I try to look for worms and I just, I don't get anything that I need. I will say at this point, it's seeming more and more likely that the golden walnut reward might be one that I don't get. I would have expected to at least have some of the skeleton parts that are hard to find, but I have not found anything up to this point. I hit five hearts with Robin, which means I only have one more to go, and also a build a stable, because I don't know, why not? This would have been something that would have been way better if I built it like forever ago. And then of course, magma geode farming. I found one. Next day our stable's done and I need to name the horse. I was not prepared for this, so to go with Smorg the cat, we now have Grubba the horse. I break open all those magma geodes and treasure troves we've gotten, and nothing useful of course. I just want to give a complete summary of everything left we need for the museum. Dinosaur egg from dinosaurs. Three items from treasure troves. A skeletal hand from the haunted skulls, and then the lemon stone from magma geodes. Six items, that's it. We've got about 10 days to do it. I acquired another prismatic shard in one of our skull cavern dives, so I go to re-enchant my pickaxe. This time I get swift, which is going to help us so much with more skull cavern dives. At this point in the game, there is genuinely not much for us to do except grind out these last three or so challenges. So straight to the skull cavern I go. I didn't find anything specifically I need, but Omni Geodes and Iridium is always good. I did trade over some Omni Geodes into treasure troves while we were there, so I break the five of them open, and I get one of the items I need left, the dried starfish, which just leaves two of them to go. Unfortunately, those two are more of the rarer items. Back to the haunted skull mine, no hand. 
and then to the mines for magma geodes. I came out with seven magma geodes. So at this point, I'm a desperate, desperate man. I have popped open probably over 100 magma geodes. Nothing. Not to say of the chance that Omni geodes have to give you the item as well. So, I'm gonna use the Stardew Save Predictor. This is something that allows you to see all kinds of things in your save file. Trains, night events, mine staircase locations, and what will come out of your geodes. So I checked the list of items we're gonna get from geodes. No lemon stowed on the magma geodes. However, if we open up three omni geodes, the third will be the lemon stone. So that does it. That's our guaranteed way to get that item. And then if the eighth item I open is an artifact trove, we'll get the ancient sword, which I've also been missing. I'll be honest, there is a 0% chance that I would have ever opened an Omni Geode ever again, so there's no chance I would have come across that Lemon Stone on my own. So the next day I put my plan into action, and sure enough, I get both items. This leaves us with three items left to donate to the museum. The Dinosaur Egg, the Skeletal Hand, and the Amphibian Fossil. So I haven't talked about the Amphibian Fossil much. One of the best chances you can get that is from a treasure chest when fishing. So that's the method I choose to go about this. Normally it's one of the earlier items that you dig up from an artifact spot, but as that hasn't happened yet, I need to force it. I decide to go fish at Ginger Island because why not? And I actually find out that I didn't fish up all the Golden Walnut, so that's a little bit of progress there. I didn't get the Amphibian Fossil, but thank God I did get three Snake Skulls because I needed more of them. The next day I decided to try something I've just never tried before. So we used clay farming a lot earlier on. Turns out you can also do that with the winter forageables since they're hoed up. And remember, now that I have the generous enchantment, I'll be getting pretty much 1.5 times the amount of items I normally would get. Then after pretty much showing up the entire beach, I do a little bit more fishing to try and get the amphibian fossil. No luck with that, but I do sell the 101 snow yams and 119 winter roots. And from selling all that, we get 61,000 gold in a night. For a money check, our total is now at 467,000, about 20,000 away from our goal. I go back to the haunted mine, don't get any skeletal hands, and we go fishing. Now while I was fishing, I didn't find the amphibian fossil, but I did find another ancient sword. Which hurts, just a little bit. Luckily, I do actually end up getting the amphibian fossil shortly after. The next day I do some more forageable farming because I'd like to hit that 500,000 gold today if I can. I donate the amphibian fossil, and while I'm doing so, I decide to check the rewards just to see if there's anything I missed. Yeah, there's a whole magic rock candy in there, so... That'll be useful trying to find another dinosaur. I do a few short tasks to try and get as much money as I can. I only get 20,000 though, which leaves me just a few thousand short. Today is the day that we got the star drop from <laughs> Haley, with plenty of time to spare. Just to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row, I check my collections list just to make sure there's not anything I'm forgetting and something's wrong with our artifacts page. The amphibian fossil just did not fill in, which worries me because will I get the star drop or not? Who's to say? I guess we'll find out. Anyway, today I go into the Skull Cavern using that magic rock candy to really try and find a dinosaur. And of course, by the end of it, no egg. All of that luck for nothing. So my main job this next day is I'm going to make that 500,000 and I'm going to buy the movie theater. I sell off the forgeables we got yesterday to Pierre and easily afford the movie theater. I haven't had a lot of luck getting the skeletal hand from the Haunted Skulls, so I go to the only other place where it can spawn, Bone Nodes from Ginger Island. It's been a while since I checked them, so there's a lot here. Finally, I got that hand. Which leaves one item, the dinosaur egg. So with that, I head straight off to the Skull Cavern to try my luck again. Nothing again. I only have three days left to get this egg. It's getting tight. I've decided that there is no way that I'm going to find another dinosaur that will drop that egg in three days. It's such a high risk, high reward strategy that works over time, but in three days, no. So I try to find other ways to get the egg. It is one of the rarest items you can get from treasure chests while fishing, but there's one other way to get it. It can spawn in the movie theater crane game, not as a regular item, as a secret hidden behind a bush that you will not see unless you're specifically looking for it. So since that is infinitely repeatable, that's the method I'm going to use. 
There's one thing we need to overcome, though. This guy who stands right in front of the crane game almost all the time. At the beginning of day 98, I get a note saying the night market will be in town tomorrow, so I need to set aside some time to get the three fish from that. Note that I have to get them from day 99, because you're sent the star drop the next day after you complete the fish. So if I complete it on day 100, technically I don't get that star drop. So I spend a little time fishing just in case I get the dinosaur egg, and then after 9 I go to the movie theater, and the guy is still there. Despite the save predictor saying he wouldn't, he's there anyway. That only gives me tomorrow as a chance. So what am I going to do at this point other than fish the entire day away, hoping for another chance of that egg? I sell all the fish and go to sleep. The next day rolls around, and I get the millionaire achievement. This was not a goal I was going for, but I kind of wish I had made it a goal at this point, because that's actually really cool to do in 100 days, especially with no farming. I prepare my inventory as if I'm going to go to the Skull Cavern, because if I go into this movie theater and that guy's standing in front of the crane game, that's my only chance. I go in, and he's gone. So now all it comes down to is I need to keep playing the crane game, over and over and over again until that dinosaur egg pops up. This took so many attempts for, to get the dinosaur egg to show up that I thought that this was just some fake rumor at some point. But finally, almost running out of money to pay for the crane game over and over again, it finally showed up. I donate it right away, and I do in fact get the star drop. So my collection screen didn't matter, it just matters that all of the items are there in the museum, thank God. This leaves us with just one more thing to do, catch those three fish tonight. So I wait until six to give myself as much time as I can, go to the night market and immediately go down on the submarine. And I catch all three exclusive fish right in a row. And that is a completed fishing screen. The next morning I wake up and sure enough, in my mailbox is the final star drop. For day 100, there's really not much to do. I just walk around, decorate the town a bit, and I do go and check to see how many walnuts I ended up getting in the long run. I ended up with 80 out of the 100 walnuts that I needed. Now I'll admit, I know where most of those come from. Five from the mermaid, six for the bear skeleton, three for the snake skeleton, one for the bat skeleton, and then three from bananas. But I'll be honest, that doesn't get me to 100. I'd still be too short at that point, and honestly, I don't know where I would get them, because I don't know where I'm missing them. So even if everything went absolutely perfect luck-wise, I still probably would have been short a walnut or two, but I'll take that. So here is the end game summary. I ended up getting 90 of the 100 points that I laid out for myself. The only challenge that we did not reach is getting into the 100 walnut door. Which, you know, makes sense. I feel like a lot of people saw that and they were like, nah. But to be fair, I got really close. The only thing that really stopped me was just a few RNG elements. I had a ton of fun with this project. I'd like to do another 100 days eventually. I don't think I'll be following up this one with a 200 days because honestly, we've pretty much achieved everything that is achievable without having any crops. And in terms of getting the obelisk and the golden clock, I'm really not interested in grinding millions of gold with no crops. If you have any suggestions for what 100 days I should do next, please let me know. Thank you all for watching and good night.